Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel here in South Carolina in Huntington State Park. And I bumped into Meredith, Sam, and David, and they're going to give us a tour of their really cool camper van. Tell us a little bit about their story and uh, give us a tour inside and out. Welcome to New Jersey Outdoor Adventures. Yeah, thank you so much. So this is our 1977 Chevy camper van. It's a G20 camper van uh, and it was uh, manufactured uh, originally so we didn't do the actual conversion but we uh, did a lot of the restoration work over the past two years. So we acquired this thing uh, about two years ago. Uh, we bought it in uh, Grand Falls, Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, we live uh, a bit further north than that in Goose Bay, Labrador. And um, since we acquired it, uh, we uh, the bones of the, of the actual vehicle are really good. So the engine worked great. Uh, there's a little bit of rust, but uh, nothing for uh, nothing that we were too concerned with, considering the vehicle is over 40 years old. Uh, but most of the, of the work that we had to do uh, was actually on the inside. Uh, this thing had original shag carpets, which uh, were um, brown. They were supposed to be orange, but they they, they turned brown over the years. Uh, we had to restore the bed and uh, we had to uh, just update uh, some of this to make it a little more livable. So if you want to come on inside, uh, we'll show you uh, how we live. So this thing was really a, a gem of a find for us. Like I said, a lot of what we uh, needed to do was just simply to update this, uh, this vehicle. Um, so I'll just kind of start over here. Uh, the cabinets here, the, they are all original, so all that we did to update them, we just gave them a paint job, uh, we kind of uh, redid the doors, and um, over here you'll also see that we put in some new curtains as well, uh, the original ones of course were uh, more than uh, you know past their day. Uh, we got some storage over here, so a lot of our knick-knack items, everyday items, in order to keep them organized we uh, just have a bit of uh, storage space over here. And we'll open up our drawers here. So we've kind of got this organized kind of uh, based on what we need. So in here we've got uh, what we call our office. So we've got our books in here. We've got some games that we like to play at night. And down here we've got some stationary items, things like cards uh, and such. We also have uh, things like uh, you know, some correspondence items in here as well. So that's kind of where we call our office. Uh, we've got a hook in here, so uh, when we're traveling, if we're hitting some bumpy roads, uh, the hook here just kind of keeps the door nice and secure. Uh, in our next drawer over here, this is what we call our garage. And we've got three levels to the garage. So in the top one here, this is all of Sam's items. So of course Sam likes his treats. We've got some treats out here. Sam, do you want a treat? Come here. Now, can you sit? And can you give Dad a kiss? Oh, here you go. Go see Mom. Good boy. And in here we also got some medical stuff for Sam. So in case he, uh, in case he gets uh, into things he shouldn't, we've got some shampoo in here. We've also got his nail clippers, uh, and we also have just a few wipes and and whatnot. Uh, Next down here we've just got a few additional items. We've got a, a Polaroid in there. This is a solar panel that we use when we're out ca uh, tracking in the woods to charge our phones. And down below here we've got additional storage space for just some everyday items that we might need along the, right, along the way. There are some tire plugs that we may need occasionally. We've got some duct tape. We've got a few headlamps and whatnot. So. Uh, most of our everyday items stay nice and organized in the van. Right here. Yeah, so uh, if we are connected to what they call shore power, uh, here is the switch for our shore power. So since we're in a park today, uh, we just flick the switch and we can operate our refrigerator and our lights uh, with the power uh, that's here. We've got uh, some ventilation windows up here. Uh, you'll notice that they're also screened in and they can slide back and forth. And on, uh, on hot days, we're able to keep this place nice and cool. 
Um, we have uh, right here we've got our hashtag so we were actually married in August so our hashtag if you want to uh, follow us on Instagram is rings and road trips and obviously the road trip and there's the ring uh, we've got a mint plant here just to make it feel a little at home and uh, this is one thing that we did update so we did need additional uh, cabinet space so I built these cabinets and just stained them over so we keep things like our coffee and our tea in here and if we have anything such as things like our condiments that we have a few additional condiments so anything that we can kind of poke in uh, in this area that's where we keep them uh, this is a great idea for anyone uh, looking to uh, do a van conversion or update their van uh, so this is a fan uh, it runs off of the uh, off of our um, offshore power I guess you call it and uh, it works great it keeps this place nice and cool also this time of the year on cool nights when there's a lot of dampness it's really good for uh, getting the dampness out of the vehicle so it has a couple features here uh, you can turn it off and on you can also reverse the direction of the fan so if I push this button the fans actually going to turn directions and that'll actually bring the air into the vehicle rather than out so you've got a couple options there you can also adjust the speeds here we can slow it down or speed it up and also we can automatically set this thing to uh, operate if it gets warm enough and of course we can close this up so if we just kind of want a ceiling fan we can just close this and it just operates like a normal ceiling fan uh, along here we've got our kitchen area so we've got a, a brand new backsplash here just to kind of update the place uh, because it's an area we also use to kind of brush our teeth we've got our toothbrushes left there for a uh, convenience sake um, this is the original uh, propane stove so this is a three burner range so uh, most days we use this for cooking unless we cook outside so it's nice because if we take off our cookware this top actually folds down and it gives us additional space and it's got three gas knobs for um, for cooking um, also down here we've got a refrigerator this is the ori original refrigerator that came with the place so if I open this up you can see we need to do some grocery shopping but it works great um, the one thing about this particular fridge that um, you know is a bit of a drawback is uh, when we're camped for several days at a time um, the, the fridge does draw a lot of power so sometimes it does power down after a couple of days but it does a really good job considering it is 40 years old Heavens. Uh, here we have our uh, cutlery drawer so we pull this out and we've got all of our main cutlery items here we've got a small basket here just for uh, our forks and knives and we've got a few additional items in here we just got our basically utensils that we use on a day to day basis we've also got a sink here uh, one nice thing about this sink is that it actually has a top to it so if we're not using the sink uh, it does uh, have a top that we can expand our counter space so in here we've got just some, some of our dishes but you can see that the sink runs there so the sink actually runs into a gray water tank which is around the back and um, we also have a hand pump here so I'll give that a few pumps and you can see the water coming out and it drains quite nicely there is a second uh, second faucet here so when we are uh, stopped in locations like this sometimes we like to connect to the, the the water that's available to us here in the back this is kind of uh, additional space so you see lots of our uh, cabinet space here so we keep things like our uh, our medications we keep uh, our hygiene uh, items we've got uh, my wash bag there for example combs and whatnot um, this space also deals uh, doubles as a bit of a bathroom as well so we do have a camper pot uh, uh, porta potty there so we use that occasionally we try not to use it but uh, it is there uh, if we need it uh, also in the back here I can show you we've got three uh, solar panels actually so on days when we are stopped for uh, you know several days at a time instead of having to run the the engine to generate power we can just 
set those things up and uh, you know it kind of extends our stay if we're, if we're parked for a few days. Um, when we stop for the night uh, we do keep our, our bedding here so it's in a it's in a uh, storage tote right there so uh, we take the bedding out uh, when uh, of course at the end of the night uh, keep our coats back here as well and in addition we've got additional storage here for some cleaning supplies so it's a little bit tight back here but uh, you know it keeps a lot of uh, a lot of the things that we just kind of need occasionally back here and we also keep our garbage can there and uh, right here so this particular lamp uh, this one works uh, on the um, on the main uh, when we're plugged into the uh, main power so right now because we're on shore power it works just fine if we were out in the uh, out in the woods camping this light would not work but we do have additional lighting so these lights are LED lights which we purchased online and those provide great light and they also don't draw the battery power down which is which is a feature um, right here got right here uh, we've got uh, behind our dream catcher here this is our um, this is our thermostat right here so uh, it's not on right now it's a nice warm day uh, for us from Canada uh, but this thing here uh, is our thermostat and this connects to our propane furnace the propane furnace is below the bed uh, so on nights when it gets a bit cold we can light the, the furnace it's an original furnace uh, to the vehicle but it works really really well so our propane is on the back of the vehicle which I can show you in a bit uh, but the actual furnace is underneath the bed so if I lift up our lift this up here you can see that the furnace is located right here and because it's the original furnace we actually have to light this thing so we pull off pull off the grate right there and all the way in the back you can see the furnace so the actual pilot gets lit right there and we use that as an igniter so once this thing is lit uh, it operates off of the thermostat so we can uh, have uh, heat uh, even on chilly nights sure. so this bed um, of course doubles as additional living space during the day um, so this is one thing that we did change so the original bed was a fair bit smaller than this one so we actually uh, changed this bed to make it a little bit bigger and a little more comfortable so you can see just our pillows here we use these at night but they also double as throw pillows during the day because we've got our dog with us we do like to keep this uh, red throw blanket on there as well so that just kind of keeps it clean while we're not uh, you know while we're using it during the day but if I pull this back I can show you what the actual bed looks like. So this is a uh, futon mattress cover. Uh, we bought it online as well. Uh, it kind of goes with the, the decor that we chose them for this. And inside here we actually have two uh, four inch memory foams. Uh, one thing that we're really, really, really impressed with uh, with this bed is that it's very comfortable. So uh, most days uh, we don't really want to get out of bed just because it's, it's nice to lie in. Uh, that was one of our big concerns when we converted this van was is it going to be comfortable on a day-to-day -day basis uh, honestly when we stay in hotels or we stay with friends this is actually much more comfortable so we'd almost prefer to stay in the van even those days when we have other options um, because the van Sam can you get down my buddy See uh, so underneath the van it doubles as a storage place as well so if we lift this up, you can see that we've got a couple of doors there. So we've got lots of storage down here as well. So we keep things like our backpacks down here. Uh, we also keep things like additional food. Keep things like extra towels down here as well. So all those things, um, you know, they get poked away so we don't need to be tripping over them on a regular basis. And if we need to use those things uh, and not lift that up, can also access them down below here Oops. and we've got access to them from there as well so during the day this is a lot of our living space one thing that we can do to make extra seating though is that this particular seat uh, it actually swivels around so I'm gonna swivel this around we need to open this door 
do so. So we'll open up this door. And there is a lever right down here. And when I push that lever forward, this chair swings around. And it gives us additional living space and additional seating in here. I see a track here <clears throat> that goes over. Was there originally another bed up top here? Yeah, so um, this area up top, um, this railing is original uh, to the uh, original conversion. Um, so what the original owners had done is they had some boards here. They were kind of, uh, you know, the length of the, the van and about three feet long, two feet long. And they would just kind of stack here along these railings. And that would actually provide a second bed up top here. Because there's only two of us, however, uh, we didn't need the extra bed. So we converted this space up top to where we keep uh, our clothes. So um, up here, there was carpet up here originally. Uh, I'll take down some of these baskets to show you what's underneath. You have this nicely organized. I think you utilized every inch that you could. You yeah, have to yeah, that was, smaller that was, van. it was really important. We don't have a lot of space. We're going on a long-term trip here, so it was really important to maximize uh, all of our space. So we just put down some flooring here so this stays nice and clean. Uh, we got uh, you know, four uh, totes here for keeping our clothes. It's also kind of space where my ukulele has kind of found its home. And we've also got some uh, bungee cords here. Those are there in case uh, you know we're going over rough terrain, we're going uphill. They just help the totes uh, from falling over. And they come in handy for other purposes. Sometimes we use them as a clothesline, so uh, they work well. Uh, up front here, when we're driving. This is a cool retro dash. Yeah, it's a really cool dash. Uh, one thing that uh, we did want to preserve uh, was, this is actually an eight track player. Unfortunately, in order to set up our newer, uh, our CD player and our blue uh, Bluetooth, uh, you know, into, into our sound system, we had to disconnect this. Uh, it does work, however, when it is connected. So uh, we did get a couple of eight tracks, but it's kind of hard to find, you know, um, you know, any newer music and whatnot. Um, and and so th this works out quite well. So we installed this uh, installed this new uh, sound system. Uh, this is what they call the dog house. So with these uh, with these vehicles, in order to access the engine. This actually, uh, this whole gray compartment here, that actually pops off, and that's how the mechanics actually work on the engine. Uh, they actually come in the vehicle to work on it, which is pretty cool. Um, I see a socket on the floor back here. Was that uh, a table that was once in yeah, here? Yeah, so, uh, the, yeah, the, originally there was a table that would, would fit in there, so there was a pole, and the table would fit on there as well. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we couldn't really uh, have the, a water bed and keep the table as well. So, uh, you know, we kind of weighed the ads and said we, we prefer the, the larger bed. So most of the time we're kind of eating uh, eating lunch on the couch. We do have a small table with us, but more times than not, uh, you know, we're kind of eating eating on the couch. So we can bring you around to the back. Watch the wire there. So your uh, shore power is on the curbside, which is uh, European style. Yeah, so uh, anytime you want to uh, get shore power here, uh, pulls out from the back. Uh, so this is our, our line right here. Um, so when we're done, kind of, uh, this just the, we just kind of push the, push the wire back in, the cable back in. And we can kind of put this down. And when we're parked, it's best, or when we're traveling, it's best to keep this closed. That just prevents any water getting in uh, or any road uh, dirt. Uh, right here, this is actually how we fill up our tank, so I'll, I'll show you the tanks from the back in a second. Um, but the tank here, uh, when we actually want water uh, to kind of to pump uh, and do dishes for, for drinking and whatnot, we actually just fill it up from right here. So uh, when we're done filling that up, we just put this top back on and we close that shut. If we do uh, connect to the water that's available here at the park, we just simply unscrew this and we can connect the host directly here. We don't normally do that, we actually haven't been using that at all, uh, but it is an option for us. So we come around the back. Uh, one thing that we had uh, discussed um, when we uh, 
decided on the strip was how much additional storage do we need. So we got some storage in the back here. You can see some of the stickers that we have in the vehicle. The white ones are actually left over from our wedding. So we kept those on. Um, right here we have our propane tank. So this is a 10 pound tank. It's a bit of a unique size. We had to order this one in specially. And you can see that it's got a heavy duty uh, bracket on the back. So we mounted this bracket to the back door. And just to keep it secured, it has a lock on there as well. And we've got an additional cable for extra security. So um, right here we come to the back. We've got a back rack here. So we do have a two additional storage uh, crates that we keep. Um, so the back rack is, is welded onto the uh, welded onto the chassis there, and the receiver mounts right on. Um, so we keep uh, additional things in here, mostly just extra storage. If we have uh, there's an extra propane tank in there, for example, we've got additional bags and whatnot. Uh, you'll also find our tire located on the back here. So uh, if we do have a flat, we've got a, a spare tire that we can take with us. We also had to move our license plate uh, out onto this rack as well because when we're traveling the license plate was originally on the vehicle but you couldn't see it from the back so we just had to move that out to the back uh, just so uh, people can identify us. And we come around on this side and oh, here is our gas tank so when we need to fill up we just put our gas in right there. You can see it's got a really cool silver top. And this thing takes about uh, around 30 or 35 gallons. I'm not sure exactly how much it is. These windows on the side here, they can actually pop out, which is really cool. So on a warm day, we can get additional ventilation. Down here, uh, I talked about the, the furnace before. So uh, when we do run the furnace, what's really cool about it is that uh, when you're actually using propane, it's important that you don't get fumes in your vehicle because uh, you know lighting propane uh, furnaces inside is, is, is certainly not good for your health with carbon monoxide. So uh, when we light the furnace, there's actually two uh, locations here. The bottom one is an in air intake, so when the, the uh, furnace kicks in, it actually burns air, taking it from the outside. The exhaust here on the top that actually blows the uh, the exhaust out of the vehicle, so we don't need to worry about um, you know fumes getting into the vehicle. So it's nice and safe. This paint is in a great condition, as well as the top. That's a fiberglass top. It's yeah, yeah. Lasted all these years. Yeah. So uh, when we purchased the vehicle, uh, we like I said, we got it in Newfoundland. Now Newfoundland is near the ocean. They use a lot of salt on the road, so tr typically a vehicle of this age would be mostly rust at this point. Uh, but the owners that purchased it, they originally purchased it out in Alberta in Western Canada. And out there, it's a very dry climate, so the vehicle held up really well over time. So considering the age of the vehicle, uh, it's in great shape. So we didn't really have to do any uh, work on the outside in terms of reconstruction. We just simply did a bit of paint, uh, painting on the front here. The front bumper was painted and, and so on. So, do you have any tips for our viewers that are looking to buy something like this uh, for the first time and enter this lifestyle, do you have anything that you had to overcome to get to this point that uh, maybe you could help out someone else that's looking to do the same thing? Yeah, I think with an older model such as this one, I think the important thing is realize what is fixable, realize what's gonna cause you uh, long-term structural problems. So uh, before we purchase this vehicle, um, if you're curious, we paid $2,500 Canadian for it. So we got it, uh, we, we, we thought, it looks like it's a, a good deal, knock on, knock on wood. Uh, but we did have a mechanic look at the vehicle. He looked at the engine, he looked at the structure. And while the interior of the vehicle needed a lot of work, there was some water damage, uh, obviously cosmetically it needed a lot of updating. Those were things we felt comfortable doing. Um, however, um, you know, if we had a lot of mechanical issues, if there was rust that we just simply couldn't fix, then this thing wouldn't have been a good buy. So I think when you're purchasing uh, older models, make sure that the bones are good, so to speak. Um, and as long as you don't have any of those major issues that you can't fix, uh, I think, you know, uh, things like the cosmetics, things like the appearance, putting some paint on things, putting some extra sealant around the windows, those are things that you can do, they're relatively inexpensive. And if you do have issues down the road, they're fixable. Um, and that would be my, my main suggestion there is just make sure that the engine runs well, 
that you don't have any rust, and that um, you know your vehicle's not going to break down on you when you're in on your adventure. And what would you describe your commitment to the lifestyle? Are you a weekend warrior, a couple weeks at a time? Or are you guys actually full-time right now? Yeah, so we actually got married in August, and we uh, are taking a year off from our jobs. So we're both teachers. We, don't, no, we both normally go back to work in September. This September, however, uh, we actually started to travel. So we did our home province in Newfoundland and Labrador in September, visited some family and friends. Uh, in October, we were in Atlantic, Canada. And uh, since the start of November, we've actually been traveling through the United States. And we're going to be in the United States living in this thing full time until about the end of April. At the end of April, we're going to go back to Canada for the spring. And we're actually going to be in this thing until about uh, next July or so. The date is pretty loose, but um, yeah, between now and next July, this is our home. And it's uh, pretty much an everyday thing. Now that you've uh, done the modifications and you're out using it in the lifestyle, is there anything that you would do differently um, now that you're out here on a day to day? Well, I think um, the last couple of weeks, you know, we've been down in the United States, uh, you know, it's been exclusively in this thing. You know, it's, it's taken us a little bit of time to find our groove, find out, you know, uh, a morning routine, for example find out uh, you know our, our likes and our dislikes and our preferences and and what types of things we can tolerate and what we can't um, so I think it's a bit early for us to kind of give that type of advice uh, right now but uh, I guess that to this point I would say just give it a bit of time um, you know things aren't going to be perfect right from the get-go but um, you know I think as you as you kind of get into the lifestyle you kind of learn some of the tricks of the trade. I'm sure we've got a lot more learning to go, but um, even even since we began this uh, back in I guess uh, in September, we've come a long ways in just uh, you know adapting our lifestyle and um, you know even for something as simple as uh, learning to uh, find sources of water or finding great campsites or uh, finding places to shower. All those things you kind of learn over time. So give it time, and I think uh, you know the more time you spend at it, the, the more you'll realize that. Uh, it's something that you, you can't achieve. Well, David, thank you very much for taking the time to give us a tour of your beautiful 1977 Chevy G20 van conversion. Uh, I just love the, the character and the style. I drove past this campground a few times and I seen it and I was like, oh, I have to meet these people because there, there's got to be a great story with it. Well, and you. and I, w I wish you safe travels and, and plenty of enjoyment. Yeah, thank you so much. And if you want to give us a follow on Instagram, uh, Sam has his own very own Instagram account. It's Sam in the van. And our hashtag, uh, if you want to follow us that way, is Rings and Road Trips. And we hope to uh, see you out there. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'd love it. We'll see you soon.